Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on solubility. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we're talking about solubility example number five. Keep it alive with number five. Determine the solubility of calcium phosphate. The KSP for calcium phosphate is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 26 at 25 degrees Celsius. So calcium is a periodic trend charge. That's group two, so it's a two plus charge. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion, that's PO4 with a 3 minus charge. We're going to combine those two together. That is the 2 plus and the 3 minus. Take the bull by the horn, flip, bring it down, and you get that formula of calcium phosphate. That is combining them in the charge ratio so that the net charge on the compound is equal to zero. All right. Remember, KSP values are temperature dependent, therefore I always need to include that temperature. We're going to write the equation and do an ice table. So calcium phosphate is Ca3, parentheses PO4 with a 2 on the outside. That's an insoluble precipitate, as most phosphates are, and that's a solid. That equilibrium arrow lies predominantly on the reactant side, as the KSP value of times 10 to the negative 26 indicates that it is an insoluble precipitate, and it is reactant favored. On the product side, I have three calcium ions aqueous plus two phosphate ions um, that's aqueous. All right, we're going to do an ice table for this, so that's initial change in equilibrium. Do I need to incorporate anything for a value for the solid? That's the calcium phosphate. No. All right, do I have anything on the reactant side initially? That's a zero for the calcium ion, zero for the phosphate ion, just like any other equilibrium reaction, right? It's going to be shifting to the right. So since this is shifting to the right, I'm going to have something on the product side eventually, okay? But initially, it's a zero, okay? On the solid, I got nothing. Don't worry about that. Now it's going to shift towards the reactant side. So I'm going to have plus signs for both the calcium ion and the phosphate ion. I'm going to look at the stoichiometric coefficient in front of the calcium. It's a 3. So I'm going to have a 3x with a plus in front of it. The phosphate ion is a 2 stoichiometric coefficient. So I'm going to have a 2x with a plus in front of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my initial and my change. I'm going to add them up. Again, I'm not worried about my calcium phosphate solid because solids are not included in K expressions of any kind. Okay, so I got a 3x for the calcium ion and a 2x for the phosphate ion. Next thing is we're going to write the KSP value here. Remember, K values are products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. Perfect. So I got KSP is equal to the calcium ion 2 plus aqueous to the cubed, and then phosphate, that's PO4, 3 minus aqueous squared. Okay, so where are these numbers coming from? So certainly this 3 on the calcium ion is coming from that stoichiometric coefficient, and this 2 for the phosphate ion as the, that exponent here is coming from that stoichiometric coefficient as well. So products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. Okay, all right. Now, where's the KSP? Well, this is given to me in the problem at 1.2 times 10 to the negative 26. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my equilibrium values into that KSP expression. So I'm going to substitute in, instead of the calcium ion, I'm going to substitute in 3x. Instead of the phosphate ion, I'm going to substitute in a 2x. Notice that this is the most complicated problem that we have done, and we have stepwise through this very slowly to get to this point here mathematically. So I've substitu substituted everything in here for you. So I've got 1.2 times 10 to the negative 26. That's my KSP value. That is equal to 3x quantity cubed times 2x quantity cubed. Now, 3 cubed is equal to what? That's 3 times 3, that's 9. 9 times 3, that's 27. And then it's 2 times uh, 2 times 2, well, that's 4. So I've done that math, and I got 1.2 times 10 to the negative 26 is equal to 27x cubed times 4x squared. So I still need to do some simplification here. 27 times 4, and then x squared times x cubed, okay? And so remember, you're adding exponents um, for that x term. 
So I have now 1.2 times 10 to the negative 26. This is equal to 108 x to the fifth. Now I am going to solve for x. So therefore, I need to divide both sides by 108 and then take the fifth root of that answer. So that's what I've done right here. So I got 1.2 times 10 to the negative 26 divided by the 108 and the fifth root of that. That's going to equal x. Make sure you know how to plug these values into your calculator here. It's really not too difficult. Or you could do 1.2 times 10 to the negative 26 divided by 108 and then take that to the power of one-fifth. That also works into your calculator. It's perfectly sound mathematics. What does x equal? Once you get this, it's 2.6 times 10 to the negative 6. This is equal to the solubility. Whatever x is equal to, that's the solubility. So I've just determined the solubility in moles per liter. Now, I also want to get the calcium ion concentration in moles per liter and the phosphate ion concentration in moles per liter. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm substituting back into my equilibrium ice table at the equilibrium area. And for the calcium, it's a 3x. So I'm going to take my 2.6 times 10 to the negative 6. I'm going to multiply that by 3 and I'm going to get this value right here. 7.8 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. To get the phosphate ion concentration, it's 2 times x. So 2 times 2.6 times 10 to the negative 6, plug that in, and I'm going to get 5.2 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. Okay, I got one more thing here where we're going to do. We're going to determine the solubility in grams per liter. So now we're going back to the value of x, which is solubility. That is moles per liter as solubility, and I'm going to use the molar mass for calcium phosphate and then I'm going to get it in grams per liter. So I'm going to take my 2.6 times 10 to the negative 6. I'm going to multiply this by the molar mass of calcium phosphate, which is 310.19 grams per mole. You should see that the moles cancel out. I'm left with grams per liter. I was looking for solubility in grams per liter here as an added little bonus problem, and this is going to equal 8.1 times 10 to the negative 4 grams of calcium phosphate per liter. All right, that's a very complicated problem. It's actually not too bad if you do it stepwise, but it's as difficult as they do get as far as the exponents and the powers and everything like that and plugging that into your calculator. I am the crazy hat chemist and uh, Candace and Aaron. Thank you very much to Candace and Aaron for giving me this moose hat. Okay, make sure that the moose or is loose. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and you know, everybody's got to be wearing a crazy hat every now and then. All right. See you later for next time. Bye for now.